hello everyone. So, we will continue with the measurement of thermal characteristics and uh, we are discussing the um, technique uh, guarded hot plate. Uh, guarded hot plate uh, here we use the technique of uh, directly the thermal transmission measurement by controlling the heat flow from uh, other, other directions okay. and thermal transmission is a reciprocal of thermal uh, resistance and also we have discussed that uh, the test plate is uh, the main um, component of this uh, instrument which is covered by the guard plate, guarded plate and uh, the surrounding temperature is kept 36 degree Celsius that, uh, that all the uh, plates are kept 30, uh, 3 to 36 degree Celsius and uh, the surrounding temperature is uh, kept uh, much lower than that and uh, typically it is around 20 degree Celsius it is kept one can keep between 4.5 degree Celsius to 21 degree Celsius depending on the requirement and uh, the standard relative humidity depending on the requirement it can vary from 20 percent to uh, 80 percent relative humidity and to, uh, during the test one has to keep this conditions atmospheric condition fixed and one thing one has to uh, take care this atmospheric temperature should be lower than this uh, skin temperature so that heat flows out. So, the method is that uh, it is a uh, sample is placed on the instrument that is uh, the test plate and the temperature is allowed to reach it is equilibrium and heat passing through the sample the specimen is measured in watt per square meter that, uh, that is a power consumption by the test plate and as we know that we have to uh, direct the heat flow through the fabric only heat whatever power is consumed by the test plate that heat has to pass through the fabric only uh, for that the arrangement is made. So, uh, here this central plate it is a test plate and this one the it which is uh, around this test plate it is a guard ring. So, they are both of uh, both test plates and test plate and guard ring are made of metal metallic plate and they are heated in exactly same temperature. So, if you see this is the top view if we see the side view this central one it is a it is a test plate okay. and the guard plate these are the guard plates. So, the use of guard plate is that at if we use two separate heater for this another plate which is a bottom plate which is the at the bottom of this uh, test plate and guard plate and three separate heaters are there to heat this plates. One heater is the for test plate, another heater will be for uh, guard plate and third heater is for the bottom plate and the heaters the power consumption by all the heaters can be noted down, but actual power consumption by the heater the uh, test plate the heater which is uh, heating the test plate is used to calculate the thermal transmission characteristics of fabric and the this heaters are uh, this uh, plates are heated by the power source and the temperatures are kept exactly same. So, that the heat flux is not the heat is it cannot flow sideway because the guard ring is of the same temperature there is no temperature gradient 
and it cannot come at the flow through the bottom side because here the bottom plate is of exactly the same temperature. To restrict the further heat flow the between the guard ring and the test plate there is another insulation is placed which is actually is cork insulation. So, some insulation material is placed around the test plate, so that it is totally insulated and the guard ring is also some insulation is placed, so that there is no heat flow. Now, if we heat the material here, so the if we heat the test plate, so that heat will flow only upper direction only through the top and that and test fabric sample is placed just above the test plate. The heater which is heating the test plate the power drawn by that heater is used for the heat transmission through the fabric. So, we can directly measure the amount of heat flow through the fabric per unit area if we know the area of the test plate and per unit time also. Okay. So, thermal transmission is measured here which is a reciprocal of thermal resistance. Now, how do we measure? So, thermal transmittance, so this is the thermal uh, transmittance is also known as U value. In general, it is not only used in textile material, it we this U value it is used for any other place, any other place where thermal transmission is important like uh, building. So, if we know the thermal transmission of a uh, insulating wall or maybe glass window, this U value is used. It is the rate of transfer of heat in watt through 1 square meter of the structure, it may be any structure, maybe textile fabric okay, structure divided by the difference in temperature across the structure. Okay. So, that if the in case of fabric, if we know the temperature between the two surfaces, so that uh, the temperature difference is uh, known. So, which is nothing but watts per square meter per Kelvin per dif unit difference of temperature. So, if we compare the well insulated parts of a building have lower thermal transmittance like a thick insulating cloth will have lower thermal uh, transmittance than a thin fabric. So, that is why the thermal transmittance is measured, the physical significance of thermal transmittance is this. Now, if phi is the heat transfer transmission in watt, A is the area, U is the thermal transmittance and T is the temperature difference. So, we can measure the heat transmission if we know the thermal transmittance of the material. Here we are doing in reverse way. In normally we want if we want to measure the heat transmission in watt, we, we know the if we know the thermal transmittance of uh, material like glass window, one insulating wall if we with a known thermal transmittance we can and we the if we know the area of that wall or if we know the temperature difference between uh, the two surfaces of the wall we can measure the heat transfer in terms of wattage but in guarded hot plate we use the same formula but here we wanted we, are, we want to know thermal transmittance of an unknown fabric sample. If we in that case 
we should know the heat that uh, heat transmission in watt. So, here heat transmission in watt we measure by measuring the measuring the heat required by this test plate. So, now let us see the animation this is a beautiful animation you can see here. Now, this is in case of test plate suppose test plate where we do not have any fabric only test plate there is no guard plate there is no bottom plate and there is no fabric. So, what happen to the test plate if we connect the test plate with the heater. Now, let us see this is the top view and this is side view and where we are putting only fabric on the test plate and nothing no guard plate. Heater is attached to it that that this power source is there and this is the this is basically nothing but a heater the test plate is nothing but a heater okay. and power source is there and here as there is no guard plate. So, heat is being transmitted to all the directions it gets transmitted through side way through bottom way as well as it is transmitted through the fabric also. Now, if we know the if we know the power required for this heater then then we cannot say that this power is utilized to transmit transmit heat through only through the fabric it is a portion of the or fraction of this heat is getting transmitted through the fabric. Suppose, it is a x quantity of heat is drawn power is drawn by this heater that means, a fraction of x will be required to that through the fabric, but we do not know the what is the fraction that is the problem that means, this system has to be modified. So, this system is modified in guarded hot plate. So, in guarded hot plate let us see the animation. So, this is the test plate this is the front top view side view this is this is the guard ring okay. guard ring and here it is a bottom plate it is placed fabric is placed here and now this three plates are connected with the this uh, different power source red one is connected with the this uh, test plate this blue one is the bottom plate and yellow one is uh, with the guard uh, ring and now we can see the from red one red uh, power source the heat is flowing only through the fabric in the uh, through the fabric and no other it is not going to any other direction. So, that means, whatever heat is flowing through the it is a drawn the power is drawn by the test plate that is if it is known it is if it is P the power drawn by the test plate and if we know the area of the test plate A and the temperature difference between the test plate two sides of the test plate and then in that case we can calculate the u value that is the thermal transmittance it is p by a multiplied by t p minus t a. Okay. So, that is how we can measure the the thermal transmittance of the fabric. Now, so thermal transmittance of the fabric is uh, we can measure by. So, now coming back to this uh, measurement again. So, this temperature difference if we know, so we can calculate the value of u. So, we can see the typical uh, values, typical values of some known material. We can say a single 
glaze in tight glass. So, it is a 5.7 watt per square meter per Kelvin. So, these are the different. So, well insulated wall, it is a 0.25 watt per square meter per Kelvin. Okay. Well insulated floor, these are the typical value. So, we uh, why are we using this value? Why do we want to know this value? Just to get an idea about the standard uh, insulation of standard material, which we regularly come in to contact with this type of material. So, triple glazed window allowing for a frame, it is 1.8 watt per square meter per Kelvin. Okay. Now, if we compare this values with our textile material, we can just see the this the insulation of this thermal transmittance of this material. So, their thermal transmittance values are uh, very low. So, insulated wall, poorly insulated wall it is 1.5. So, well insulated one uh, it is 0.25. So, if we see as compared to this the with the same unit the fabric material it is a say thick oven fabric it gives 20 to 80 watt per square. So, if we have thick oven fabric the type of insulation we are getting it is much less. So, very high thermal transmittance. So, we should we must know this value then only we can try to develop uh, clothing for some uh, insulation purpose. Thinner oven fabric it is a 500 to 550 to 200 watt per square meter per Kelvin. Okay. So, these are the different values and now what we have got? So, combined thermal transmittance is what we get it is a combined means it is including the air layer. So, it is a U 1 is the combined insulation P is the power loss from the test plate, which that means the power drawn amount of quantity of power drawn by the test plate A is the area of the test plate and T A T P and T A are the temperature of test plate and ambient air. Okay. And then what we have to do to know the transmittance of air again we have to perform the bare plate test. So, the bare plate test is that it is a and there for bare plate test we will get the value u 2, u 2 is calculated the transmittance of fabric. So, u uh, u uh, b p is the bare plate which is actually which shows the the air the, the thermal transmittance of air. So, effectively finally, if we want to may know the thermal transmittance of fabric. So, this is the formula 1 by u 2 equal to u 2 is the thermal transmittance of fabric equal to 1 by u 1 minus 1 by u b p. So, using this formula we can measure the calculate the thermal transmittance of fabric itself. Now, another method measurement of uh, thermal transmission characteristics is the Kawata method K K S F thermolabo. Okay. It evaluates the thermal transmittance characteristics of fabric, where two plates are used and in between the two plates fabric sample is used. So, uh, the heat plate with a constant temperature of 30 degree Celsius and cold plate Okay, it is a uh, separate plate with a lower temperature which is uh, standard 20 degree Celsius in between the fabric is sandwiched. And then the amount of heat flow is measured, the thermal conductivity is measured in terms of heat flow rate and distance by area and temperature difference. What is the distance? This is the formula, the heat flow rate q by t and that heat flow rate from the heated plate okay. l is the is the fabric thickness that is dis distance between the two plates a is the area and 
delta T is a temperature difference which is constant here it is a 10 degree Celsius. So, this using this thing this equation we can calculate the thermal conductivity. So, thermal level it is a measure the thermal conductivity, torque meter measures the thermal resistance and the guided hot plate measures the thermal transmittance. Okay. Then coming to another method of measurement of thermal uh, transmission characteristics, it is uh, using the thermal mannequin. Thermal mannequin it gives the idea of uh, total uh, total thermal um, uh, transmission of clothing. It is not the in the fabric form, it gives in the clothing form and it measures the three dimensional uh, measurement technique, three dimensional it uh, heat flows at different direction at different dimensions. Okay. It is used for testing and product development by building and automobile industries. So, that is a it is a in there it is used extensively also in textile industry it is used for developing clothing with improved thermal properties and performance testing of protective textile. So, for protective textile performance testing thermal mannequin is extremely important particularly for those applications where uh, it is a hazardous environment where extremely heat extreme hot extreme cold uh, temperature where normally we cannot perform the subjective assessment. Okay. It is basically it simulates the human body total uh, uh, human body and uh, it is divided into many segments typically 20 to 30 different segments it is divided and different sensors are placed. Okay. So, number of individually regulated body segments it is uh, more than 30. Okay, now. So, different at different body segments the sensors are uh, placed where it measures the temperature and heat flow. It can measure the three dimensional heat exchange from human body measures the heat loss due to conduction, convection and radiation. So, the whole body heat loss is determined by summing up the weighted average. So, it at different location we measure the heat loss and then we measure the total heat loss by weighted average at different like or depending on the area of that particular zone. So, we can measure. So, here it gives the total heat loss. It can integrate the dry heat loss from the body in a realistic manner. So, it actually that in dry heat loss and also there is another um, type of magnetic mannequin it is a sweating mannequin. So, there it actually simulates the sweat and measures the heat flow. So, here it is a actually realistic manner means the actual heat flow at different direction different level it can simulate and clothing thermal insulation it can measure objectively. So, actual clothing it is not the fabric sample here actual clothing it can be uh, measured. So, it is used to evaluate the thermal stress in environment with human body determine the heat transfer and thermal properties of clothing assembly. So, it is a it is total clothing assembly it is a thermal transmission it can measure means a number of clothing. So, it is not only the outer clothing or single layer it is a different types of clothing including the gloves and shoes also. So, total clothing it measures inner inner garment everything prediction of human response to extreme or complex thermal condition where we normally we cannot go we cannot perform test in those condition thermal uh, mannequin is used like extreme heat or flame in that those condition 
and it gives realistic value and it validates the results from human experiments. So, even it can validate the, the subjective assessment. So, thermal uh, that uh, mannequin test we have seen. So, it gives the realistic uh, picture. So, after the now we will discuss the other techniques to measure the thermal protective clothing for extreme heat. So, it extreme heat and it also measures the flame protection. This is one technique it is uh, the instrument has been developed here in our lab, so, where the fabric is kept in the test sample is kept in horizontal position and here it is a heat sensor where it is a copper calorimeter sensor and fabric sensor specimen is there and this is a burner where direct flame is actually placed generated and there is a fabric uh, there is a blocker the shutter is there okay. and shutter is removed manually, but one can do automatic uh, removal also. When shutter is removed the direct flame is the fabric is exposed to the direct flame and the heat flow through the fabric is measured for certain time. And this instrument we are not interested in the burn characteristics of fabric, we are interested here in the thermal transmission heat transmission due to the flame and this calorimeter the sensor measures the heat transmission and the temperature increase temperature increase in that uh, which is sensed by this calorimeter it is plotted against the time and which by knowing the rate of increase in time one can predict the time required for second degree burn. Okay. If we compare with the Stoll's curve. Okay. So, that way this instrument will give the idea of exposure time of second degree burn. Now, why is it important? So, suppose a person a firefighter or some uh, uh, any uh, anyone who is actually exposed to heat the particular fabric how long will it actually be protect the uh, will be able to protect the person from any burn injury. So, there are three types of burn injury I will discuss here. So, this is the experimental setup. Now, let us see the experiment real experiment. Now, it is adjusting the uh, flame rate we can adjust the rate of flame that can be automated also. Now, now this is now for now the blocker that is a way that is and it is removed this blocker. Now, with the time the temperature is recorded and after certain after say 10 second standard time or, or may be we can have a 15 second 20 second after certain time it is removed that is uh, the burden is stopped and we know the temperature rise with the time. And that if we know that with the time and knowing the time, so we can now predict that particular sample how long one can actually survive in the fire in case of fire without any burn injury. So, there are mainly three types of burn injuries one is first degree burn injury which is very the low intensity where it can get uh, recovered quickly. Second degree burn injury is a severe one, but one can 
actual recover it is but third degree burn, burn injury we cannot do anything so our this instruments idea here is to predict the second degree burn injury because then third degree burn injury means that there is skin total skin structure is uh, destroyed ok. Now, let us see the burn depth is measured by its severity ok. So, first degree burn injury is a skin becomes red no blister. So, that means that is normally it, it can get we can get it covered quickly. But second degree burn injury means that means it can be recovered, but it after a long time and the person can survive skin blisters epidermis must be regenerated. So, epidermis what is the surface that should be regenerated ok. So, that is a type of burn injury and third degree burn injury means it is a totally it is a destroyed. So, that means so, our idea here is to know the time required for second degree burn, burn injury and this one this is the actually this is a stole scar ok here. So, there and this is the curve which we have actually got from the instrument this black one and the point where it is actually intersect with this standard curve that is the tolerance time. So, that time if it goes beyond that that means then your third degree burn injury will start ok. And in this instrument heat flux is actually 4.2 to 16.8 that is the heat flux and this is the Stoll's uh, equation. So, th this is the Stoll's equation where T 0 is the uh, original temperature of the skin ok or test sensor. So, these are the quantitative uh, representation of the skin that the omega is the quantitative value ok and with this value this is the integral ok. This value is the this is the term integral of the this omega value it if it is 0.53 it is a first degree burn ok and if it is 1 that is second degree burn in if it is it takes place in the basal layer and if it is dermal layer then it is a third degree burn. So, that way one can uh, get uh, the it is a thermal integral and earlier instrument what we have observed it is a uh, we have uh, seen that uh, the fabric is in the horizontal direction, but most of the condition if we talk about our clothing the fabric layer is in vertical condition. So, it is uh, to it is important to know the what is happening actually happening in the vertical condition when the heat source heat source may be radiant heat source or may be flash fire comes from the side. So, this is the fabric layer fabric layer typically it is a three layer one is outer layer that is a middle layer and the inner layer. So, the outer layer which is basically it is a protective layer thermal protective layer middle layer it is a insulating layer and this inner layer which is basically absorbent layer. In case of any sweat and anything it uh, comes out from the skin. So, it should absorb and middle layer will actually it is insulating it it is it will not allow the heat to flow through that through the that layer and outer layer which will actually prevent it from the burning and also it is it is uh, it will act as a reflective layer. So, in outer layer we can have uh, some reflecting layer. So, that the maximum heat radiative heat at least it should get reflected ok. So, and the type of measurement for fire retardant textile or protective clothing there are different types of parameters one can measure. 
like ease of ignition what is that means uh, the way the how quick it get ignited. So, that uh, dif depending on the type of fiber type of uh, finished material we, we can we can actually uh, use different types of finishing treatment to change this uh, parameter after glow time is one of the parameters extent of after glow char length is another parameter flame spread time is another parameter smoldering time the limited LOI limited oxygen index okay. heat transmission factor thermal protective protection uh, performance TPP test heat transfer index. Okay. These are the different ways of expression of the fire retardant textiles, but here in this instrument these three parameters will be measured heat transfer transmission factor, thermal protection performance and heat transfer index. These three parameters quantities can be measured using this new equipment. So, the instrument for uh, uh, here it is a vertical orientation of fabric. Okay. Now, the uh, uh, existing earlier instrument is that it is a horizontal uh, orientation the other most of the other instrument like sweating guarded hot plate, tog meter. So, all these instruments are the horizontal orientation, but uh, the thermal uh, mannequin is a uh, vertical and it is a three dimensional, but this instrument it is a only vertical orientation which is more realistic. The exposure type earlier we have seen in the video it is a only flame type exposure, but this vertical instrument it is a both flame and radiative heat flow and it can work both at a time. Air gap was uh, stationary air gap there is uh, and in this instrument we can change the air gap because that to simulate the air uh, climb um, that air gap between the skin and the fabric that is the microclimate thickness. So, and microclimate is not there we can we uh, that earlier in instrument we cannot change the microclimate, but here we can change the microclimate the humidity of the microclimate we can change. So, at different humidity level the thermal transmission behavior and the exposure which we get the comfort which we get will be totally different. So, this instrument uh, gives all these advantages over the existing instrument. This is typical uh, view of the instrument here the this is the source of heat. So, this is the radiative heat source and along with the burner to give the flame. This is a fabric holder fabric sample here is there and this one is the the chamber the climatic chamber where we can control the humidity. So, humidity of this is controlled just to simulate our microclimate humidity and at the back of this here it is a the sensor though which will measure the sense the temperature and heat flow we can measure and this is connected with the motor. This is connected with the motor just to control the change the air gap. Air gap is controllable at different air gap this can be this uh, the uh, thermal transmission can be measured okay. at different level of heat. So, we know it is a radiative heat by a flame also. Okay. Now, try to see this is the flame, it is a flame and here it is a radiative heat source. This is a flame source, this is the radiative heat source, the burner is there for flame and it is a quartz lamp is for radiative heat. We can change the number of lamps to increase or decrease the rate of radiation, radiative heat and this is the chamber where the fabric is placed here and fabric holder and this is a fabric assembly and this is the chamber where 
we can actually change the humidity of this chamber okay and also the depth of this uh, change that uh, this uh, distance of this chamber is can be changed to change the air gap now this is the air gap it which is changeable as we have seen by motor we can change this distance and here is the sensor sensor assembly and sensor assembly is connected with the computer which uh, directly gets the temperature value and this is the microclimate chamber where we can actually inject the water vapor or we can draw the water vapor to maintain the humidity level and humidity level is maintained by actually measured by the humidity sensor. So, at different relative humidity we can measure we can get the heat how much temperature how much heat is flowing what is the temperature of the skin at the uh, at the other surface of the fabric what is the temperature of the microclimate that we can measure here temperature sensor is there this is the equipment and this is the shutter. So, when we want to measure start the experiment we just remove the shutter and we immediately start the experiment this is the showing the flame shutter is removed the heat is flowing it is flowing through the fabric and ultimately the sensor is receiving the sense uh, temperature and temperature is increasing and we are getting the plot okay and here we can circulate the we can circulate the humidity we can inject the humidity at different humidity level so this is the vertical configuration more closely uh, to the reality okay it is as compared to the bench top uh, instrument wide range of test can be covered by radiant exposure using iso 6942 astm 4 astm f 1939 astm f 2702 this uh, all these standards can be followed flame exposure by iso 9151 astm 4108 so this standards can be followed and both flame and radiant heat exposure by this standard so this uh, is a total it's a widely it can be used dynamic air gap between fabric and skin microclimate control it's a to control the uh, it, uh, microclimate humidity to simulate the sweating so the important parameters are effect of type and level of exposure can be measured so dif different level of exposure we can measure effect of air gap size effect of dynamic air gap so if normally it is very important as far as clothing comfort is concerned when we are in motion so at when we move our uh, um, that air gap keeps on changing air gap keeps on so that that also it simulates so effect of relative humidity whether we sweat or not whether we generate humidity so that also it can measure and vertical arrangement okay so that way it is a, it a, this instrument gives a complete information about the fire protective uh, clothing so this is the sir, and this is actual uh, picture in a. now we will discuss the various thermal transmission parameters now till now what we have measure we have uh, discussed the different different measurement technique now we will discuss the different thermal transmission parameters which are practical in nature and how to correlate with the uh, uh, this practical units with the units which we have got from the instruments so uh, the uh, practical um, uh, unit is like clove so that is used for any clothing so this all these parameters we will we will see 
So, what is thermal resistance that we know thermal resistance of textile material is a measure in SI unit in terms of degree Kelvin square meter by watt. It is a basically it is a reciprocal of thermal transmittance okay. and which we measure in in say uh, sweating uh, guarded hot plate we have seen there we measure watt per square meter per degree Kelvin. Here it is a just reciprocal of that and R is the thermal resistance of fabric layer. It is actually defined as the ratio of the temperature difference between two phases of the material to the rate of that is difference between the two phase of the material temperature difference and to the rate of heat transfer per unit area of the material that is the, the rate of heat transfer per unit area of the material okay, to the phase surface. The practical unit is that it is a torque. Practical unit of thermal resistance is widely used as a torque which is actually one tenth of the SI unit. So, one torque is one tenth of square meter degree Kelvin per watt okay. and one another unit is a clo which is approximately equal to 1.55 into torque. So, this all this clo torque we will discuss in next session. So, here thermal transmission different parameters will continue. So, till then goodbye, thank you.